Hello, welcome back. This is Calculus by Dr. Oz. Today uh, we're going to have another application of the Taylor's Theorem. Uh, we're going to find a degree where uh, uh, degree of, uh, uh, of the McLaurin polynomial uh, to approximate uh, function values. In the first exercise we have the function cosine x and we're trying to approximate uh, cosine 0.4 by using the McLaurin uh, polynomial. Uh, and in the second case, uh, we are trying to approximate uh, f of uh, 125 for f equals ln x plus 1. So essentially, we're trying to approximate ln of uh, 2.25 without using a calculator. And in, in each case, we do not want to have uh, an error more than uh, 10 to the minus 3. So the cap for the error, the maximum is for that is uh, 10 to the minus 3. So, so, so this question is asking you, uh, to, to, to find uh, the minimum number of terms uh, you should retain in the McLaurin expansion. In other words, we're trying to find a degree, okay? Uh, so are you going to keep uh, two terms, three terms, four terms, ten terms in the McLaurin expansion to make your estimation for, let's say, cosine 0.4 or, or ln uh, 225? Okay, so again, we're not using a calculator at this moment, uh, so we are uh, just having an approximation. I'm going to explain that in details in the, in the video, uh, and, and these two videos could be long. Uh, that's why I split them into two. Um, let's get started. All right, let's start uh, with uh, part uh, A, um, but before we hit the road, let me just show you the Taylor's uh, theorem. Uh, that's going to be helpful uh, along the way. So the Taylor's theorem says that uh, if you have a differentiable uh, function uh, up to the order uh, n plus 1 uh, in an interval i containing c, c is the point where you expand the function into the Taylor expansion, then there exists a z uh, in between x and c, okay, there exists a z in between x and c, such that f of x is in fact written as the summation of p sub n of x and r n of x. So in fact, uh, this part here, uh, this part of the sum uh, is just the Taylor expansion of the function at c. Okay. And the rest, what we call the tail, uh, is called r n of x here. Okay. So that means f of x uh, is the summation of the partial sum uh, in, in the, in the uh, infinite series. So partial sum up to order in here, so you cut off. And then uh, Rnx is the tail, so that has infinite many terms, okay? And then this theorem says that Rn, which is a tail, has a very descriptive uh, expression. In fact, it's written in terms of the n plus first term in the list, but evaluated at z, okay? So here z is very important, that's, that's what our analysis is gonna uh, be revolving around in the next slide and z is a guy in between x and c so if you want to evaluate this uh, let's say for uh, 0.4 uh, and if you expand uh, cosine x into its taylor series at c equals zero so that means z is going to be a number in between zero and 0.4 okay so yeah let's do the analysis i don't need to have the full expansion of cosine x uh, in terms of its taylor series but instead since we are going to do our analysis just for Rn, because the in the question statement uh, it says that um, uh, determine the degree of the McLaurin polynomial required for the error uh, in the approximation of the function at the indicated value of x, and then we wanted the error to be less than 10 to the minus 3. So all I need to know is like how many terms I'm going to retain in Pn, so what is n in other words, so that so Rn, the absolute value of Rn, is not going to be greater than 10 to the minus 3. Okay, all right, let's, let's just start. All right, so I tried to list here uh, uh, f of x and its derivatives up to the order 5 to see if there's any pattern over there. And c is 0 because this is the Maclaurin uh, polynomial or expansion. And x is going to be 0.4 because we want to evaluate uh, or we want to approximate uh, uh, cosine 0.4, right? This is uh, what we were trying to approximate. So this is in fact cosine 0.4, but let's say like we don't have a calculator and we want to approximate this. So we want to approximate it by uh, Pn at 0.4. So again, the question is like, what is n? What could be the minimum n? What is the minimum number of uh, 
terms you keep in Pn so that the error is going to be less than 10 to the minus 3. So for that reason, x is going to be 0.4. And then uh, I'm going to look at uh, Rn at 0.4 eventually. Okay. F n plus 1, z n plus 1 factorial, 0.4 to the n, obviously an absolute value. Okay. And z is a number in between uh, c and x, well, x is uh, 0.4, so z is gonna be a number in between uh, zero and 0.4, okay. Uh, so the function that we're interested in, since we're trying to uh, approximate uh, cosine 0.4, it's gonna be cosine x, okay? So the prime of that is minus sine of x, minus cosine of x, and sine of x. So use the derivative formula card if you want to check the derivatives of cosine and sine, okay? cosine x and minus sine x. Okay, so so the, 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 the all derivatives, you can just like go uh, go uh, more if you want, if you, you can look at the higher order derivatives if you want to, but all I can say here is that the derivatives of f are either uh, cosine uh, or sine. And the sine in front of those alternates time to time. But since we're interested in finding the absolute value, let's just write this uh, with um, the absolute value here. So, um, well, first of all, I'm going to sort of like isolate this part. And then I'm going to put these terms all together. Okay, because these terms are positive anyway. So I, I don't need to worry about that. Uh, but as you see, the derivatives of f could be negative because you have negative sine, negative cosine, and so on, plus sine and cosine. Uh, fluctuate in between negative one and one, so we have to sort of like put the absolute value for the derivatives of f. But one thing that we know from calculus is that uh, cosine and sine in the absolute value is always less than one. Okay, so uh, again, they fluctuate in between negative one and one, but but at the end of the day, the absolute value of that, which is this, right, could be cosine minus sine minus cosine. But no matter what it is, uh, no matter what n is. So it's either cosine and sine, and we know that uh, it's always uh, less than or equal to one. So I can majorize this quantity by only 0.4 to the n, n plus one factorial, okay? That's the first observation, but without listing the derivatives, probably you can't see that. Um, so here we go. So what I want is, since this is the error, the amount of error, right? I want this error, uh, well, this error is already less than or equal to 0.4 to the n divided by n plus 1 factorial, but I want this to be strictly less than 10 to the minus 3. Okay, that's what, what it says in the question statement, right? 10 to the minus 3, okay? All right, so, uh, so, so now we're going to have a trial error type uh, uh, section here. So 0 0.4, 0 0.4 to the n, n plus 1 factorial has to be less than 10 to the minus 2b, okay? You can try like n equals 1. You can, this is the best time, in fact, uh, to have your calculator ready. So this is like 0.4 to the 1 divided by 2 factorial. So it's 0.4 divided by 2, so 0.2. Well, 0.2 is not less than 10 to the minus 3, so n equals 1 is not a good choice, okay? We can go ahead and then look at uh, n equals 2, 0.4, squared divided by uh, 3 factorial, 0 0.4 uh, squared is 0 0.16 divided by 6. Uh, why don't you use your calculator right now uh, to come up with 0 0.16 divided by 6. All right, so you should have had something closer to 0 0.026. That is not less than 10 to the minus 3, so I, sh I should keep going. n equals 3. 0.4 cubed divided by 4 factorial. Okay, let's use our calculator. All right, you can always pause the video, by the way, do all of these calculations by yourself, because this is sort of like a trial error uh, part. So this is not a less than uh, 10 to the minus 3. I'm going to try n equals 4 here uh, for the last time. I think n equals 4 uh, must work. So you have 0.4 to the fourth divided by five uh, factorial. All right, so this is what you get approximately. And good news is that this is already less than 10 to the minus three, which is what, 0.001. Okay, I think there's one more zero here, I'm sorry. Check, 
right? So this number is already less than uh, the, the, the maximum error I was looking for in the, uh, in the statement of the question, right? So that means that I should retain, uh, as an answer of this question, I should retain, I should retain uh, four terms, okay? So n equals four, so I should keep P4 uh, to do this calculation, evaluated at 0.4. And if you have time, please go through uh, P4 uh, of uh, 0.4 and, and evaluate this. I mean, we didn't do the uh, McLaurin expansion for cosine x, but if you have time, as a good exercise, first uh, obtain uh, P4 of x and, and then uh, and then uh, substitute uh, 0.4 for x, and, and whatever number pops out, that's, that would be the approximation of uh, cosine 0.4. And at the end, you can compare this to cosine 0.4 uh, by using your calculator, and, and hit cosine pi over 4 in the radian mode, and then get the result, and then check or compare that to uh, cosine uh, 0.4. But in this question, I only needed to find uh, n, uh, because that's the degree of the uh, McLaurin polynomial. So I think we're done with that. All right.